Hi and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm uh, Daniel Bergman and I'm going to show you how I tie. It's a sort of a uh, little special fly. So when, when I did it, um, I wanted a, a fly that doesn't dig that deep uh, and that belly flash a lot in the current. Uh, and it's weighted on the underside with a piece of wire and just a couple of of uh, brass beads uh, just like the the better scratch a mineral but this this is not actually to make the fly sink it's only to to uh, supply it with a with sort of a keel uh, so it doesn't flip over and if you want to make sure uh, if you're fishing really fast waters, for example, I think it might still flip over and then I would maybe put another 4 millimeter of the orange bead here and then you're safe. Uh, but this one works excellent in, in uh, a little, little slower water. Uh, it doesn't flip over and uh, as soon as you sort of jerk it, uh, it definitely shows a lot of belly uh, downwards okay so let's go get going there's a lot of material so it's gonna take a while uh, I, as usual I start off with the back hook um, and for that I'm gonna use the the portrait attitude streamer size 1 it's a nice hook Really sharp and strong. Let's see, it stays there. I'm using a, a gel spun thread, uh, Techstream uh, power thread, 100 denier. Works really, really well. It's a bit uh, uh, slippery, so to speak, so you want to make sure it's definitely well secured to the hook shank before you start uh, attaching materials. So I go back and forth uh, over the hook shank a couple of times uh, just to make sure that everything stays in place. Yes, here we go. Um, I'm for sort of of uh, the tail I'm going to use uh, gold color uh, of course you can vary the colors in what you prefer uh, I'm going to use uh, wing and flash from Hedron Flashable uh, in gold and eventually I'm going to fade it when I move forward into some using some darker darker materials in the front uh, but I take I'm just pulling out a bunch of straws uh, what I do next is more or less the same thing as you do when you're tying a, a minnow or, or a magic minnow uh, the ball, ball tied version uh, I pull the fibers apart uh, just to rip them off uh, into strands that are like, I don't know, four centimeters long maybe. And then I just mix it and I make a sort of a ball of the material in my hand. And I take this ball of flash and I push it over the hook from the front and then I do a loose turn with the thread try to make it spread around the hook all the way around do one more turn hard turn Let's make sure it's quite well divided um, one more and then I fold it backwards and go with the thread in front of it. Um, okay, now I have a clump here. 
uh, but everything is tangled up uh, so I take one of these pet brushes I don't know what they're called in English Kletterverschlussebürste in German then I just brush this uh, which sort of rips the fibers off and brush quite a lot of material away as well I think that's sort of the appropriate appropriate length it's just maybe same a bit longer than the hook shank okay uh, the body I make up of, of uh, long hair holographic chenille uh, from Techstream uh, it's this one is in olive which is my absolute favorite color uh, in this material it's like got some olive in it and it got some pearlescent bluish uh, and there's some copper in it really fishy stuff and I just tie it in um, go to the hook eye with the with the thread and I start wrapping and simultaneously while I wrap each turn touching the uh, turn before I stroke it backwards sort of as if you're doubling a, a uh, Palmer hackle on a like a, on a streamer fly or something by doing this you you're getting the least amount of material tied down tie it off trim the excess I think that might be enough for the next section tie it down thoroughly okay uh, now I want the next color uh, which is uh, same material as before, the wing and flash, but this one is called chartreuse, even though it's not chartreuse, it's more like uh, goldish, goldish greenish stuff. It's really nice. Take a pull out some strands from the bunch, uh, lay them together, and rip them off same thing there rip it off in like three parts you don't want two long fibers because everything is just gonna tangle up then and then you sort of mix it make like I did in the back sort of a little ball of this wing and flesh and I push it onto the hook from the front make a loose turn and tighten the loop one more loose turn and tighten oh, that's a bit if you're getting too close to the hook eye you can actually just push everything back a bit okay uh, I go in front of the material with the thread now there's a lot of uh, loops in this material uh, if you want you can go through with your scissors like this Choop. cut some of the loops open or you can just sort of attack it with the with a brush then you will actually rip off a lot of fibers Yeah, something like that. I stroke it backwards and tie it down, down. And then I got it sort of nicely divided around the hook shank. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this fly is, as I showed before, it's tied upside down. Uh, so I'm going to make a wing on the the up on the underside of the hook which is going to be the upside of the fly 
And the wing uh, is made up by Rabbit Sunker. Uh, this one is uh, Hairline's uh, Tiger Bard uh, Magnum uh, Rabbit Strips in olive, black over light olive, which is a really fishy looking color. And usually in these uh, bags you can find different thicknesses of skin in the same same rabbit strip. I want to use uh, a part that's not so thick. Okay, and then I measure just about how long I want the wing of this guy to be, sort of. No exact science. And then I just cut the strip off. And then I measure it in again against the fly. I want it to be sort of uh, protruding maybe three centimeters behind. And then I take the whole strip and I push it. Push the hook through the middle of the skin of the strip, and then I take the hook loose from the wise, pull it down, and get the hook in there again. There we go. Okay, uh, now we're going to try to tie this in in a nice way. Then I pull some of the hair forward. I want to trap some hair down, uh, but not too much. And it's going to be tricky to fasten it. And then I do a loose turn just behind the, the hook eye. Okay, then you can do a couple of more hard turns and really pull it tight then you try to trim off the uh, excess of skin strip without cutting your thread which can be easier said than done oh now I'm going to make sure this is stuck there we go much better do a couple of turns in front there trim off some of the stuff pointing forward uh, and for legs I'm going to use this uh, grizzly flutter legs in black bard over orange uh, from hairline which are really nice because because they're both fluorescent and they got some sparkle in them and wh while I'm at it I'm cutting away four four uh, rubber legs because that's what I'm going to use for the whole fly. Okay, I tie these in by threading them over in between the previous thread turn and I want the want the leg to be a bit longer facing forward than backwards. Okay, same thing on the under on the other side. Pull it in there. Let's see. Come on. Ah, something like that. And pull it tight. And then I fold them backwards. And I do a loose turn, two loose turns, and I tighten upwards. And I get them lying quite nicely, sort of downwards backwards. If you want to get those legs out of the way you can always use one of these uh, hair clips. Okay, uh, just to make it a little bit nicer to finish off I take a dark grey pen or a black pen or whatever and color up the thread. Do a couple of turns just to Cover up the white. Then I take a little drip of 
a little drop of super glue and I do a couple of half hitch knots and then it's it's going it's getting soaked by the glue so it will stick yes that's the back hook nice flashy underside okay let's proceed to the front part of the fly and for this I'm using a sort of a heavy hook it's more or less actually a most guys would consider this a pie cook uh, but it's the universal predator jig 60 in size 2o from partridge uh, it's quite heavy as i said but it actually helps uh, the action of the fly Yes. Then I just attach the thread and go a couple of times back and forward just to make sure things stay in place. Uh, and now we're going to attach this baby to the rear hook. And for that I'm using uh, like a 20 pound uh, coated partridge wire cutting off like uh, 7 or 8, or eight centimeters. Should be enough. There we go. And then the connection between the two hooks here I'm using uh, this uh, six millimeter articulation beads uh, in a nice color that's called opal root beer okay get your trailing hook uh, thread the wire through lay down the ends in the same place and thread on the beads Okay, let's see. So, the glittery part is going to face upwards when you have it in the vise. And make sure you try to get the, the uh, loop of the wire standing up so you don't get the tail of the fly flipping around. Tight down, quite hard turns. And I fold the ends backwards. Same thing on both sides. Just tight down hard. Here we go. And uh, always put a stroke of, of super glue over over the wire to make it stronger okay uh, wing and flash again to sort of hide up the uh, connection same thing as before rip it apart rip away some of the longest fibers uh, make it a clump mix it Try to make sort of a ball in your hand of the material. And if the glue is not really dry, this can be sort of messy. That's okay. Push everything on from the front. Make a couple of loose, ah, barb. Loose turns and nail it there and push everything backwards and go in front of the clump with the 
with the thread. Okay, now it should be nice and strong there. We attack it again vigorously. That's nice. Perfect. What we're gonna do now is tie in the wire for the weighting. Uh, same wire as I used for the articulation, but I can use uh, quite a short bit, maybe like four, four centimeters or something. tight down properly and uh, facing backwards fold it and tie it down again so it's you're positive that it will stay there because uh, there's quite a lot of strain on this on this wire with those uh, beads going back and forth glue it a little bit just to be on the safe side now we're going to have some more of this uh, long hair holographic olive chenille. Take enough so you don't have a hassle winding it forward. Then I start winding, stroking it backwards all the time. Gives a really nice volume and a nice shimmer to the body of the meat. Okay, that should be enough. Leave like six or seven millimeters or something to the hook or, or to the bend of the hook. Make sure it's tie down properly and cut it off okay uh, now we're going to add the beads and as I mentioned before you can you can experiment quite a lot with how much you weigh it down if you use like tungsten beads it's gonna sink like a rock but on the other hand uh, you won't get the same uh, belly flash flashing uh, effect as I want on this one. So I'm using only a 5mm brass bed and a 4mm flue orange bead. Which one you put first doesn't really matter. Something like that. And I make the loop sort of biggish just to, to let the material or, or the chenille pulsate well underneath. I tie, tie the wire down and I fold it backwards and tie it down. Ah, come on! Tie it down again. Take the big, big bad scissors or if you have cutters it doesn't matter just trim off the excess there we go rock and roll and try to get it really centered on top of the hook very well very well very well and now we're going to take some of this um, orange i think it's called orange yeah, this is orange, it's not copper. Uh, wing and flash. Um, be quite generous. And this has sort of a different structure than both the gold one and the, the uh, chartreuse one. It's really hard, you can't really rip it apart in, in the same way. So I cut it in sort of similar sections. mix it so everything is facing facing in a different direction make sort of a like a ball 
like I did before. Fluffy, fluffy, flashy ball. Push it on. Loose turn. Tight down. Fold it backwards. Make sure it's stuck there. You can go with your scissors and cut some of the loops up. Because you're not going to pull it off in the same way uh, with the brush since this orange color is a bit stronger than the other one. That's good. Like, like how it sort of fades a bit. Okay. Uh, hey ho, let's go. Uh, wing for the front hook. Sunker again, same as in the back. Try to find a piece of skin that doesn't have that thick uh, skin part. Measure it so it's a bit longer than what you're going to need. And just cut it off. That's perfect. Do, 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 do. You want it pointing a bit uh, beyond the the maybe like a centimeter overlapping the the hook eye on the rear hook. Then you just ah there you go somewhere there. Push the hook through the skin, take it out of your vise, pull it down, uh, put it on top of everything and get it back in the vise again. Make sure you get it stuck properly. Rock and roll. And then you can take like a, a dubbing needle or something and just make sure you're getting the materials on the hook nicely divided on both sides and you get the sunker strip down and divide the hair you can moisten your fingers if you think feel like it's easier to get the hair to stay in place and then I tie it down, uh, trying not to get the, the, strips, the skin strip to follow your thread around. So I do loose turns and then I pull. Loose turns, pull. Okay. That should be enough. And I carefully, carefully, carefully trim off the excess of sunker. I don't want to cut my hook off. I wind it down a little bit backwards so it's totally stuck in place. Okay, uh, silly legs again, same color, uh, orange, black part. Maybe like 60-40. Uh, 60 facing forward, uh, 40 facing uh, pointing backwards. Doesn't matter really, but it's something in my head tells me to do that. Okay, tie it down and fold it. A loose turn and pull it upwards or downwards. Then you get everything to stay in the position you want it and to keep it out of the way you can put in a hair clip just to get those annoying silly legs out of the way okay uh, so the head we're going to build up with two different colors of uh, senior laser dub uh, we're going to use rusty bronze uh, for the underside uh, just to harmonize with the orange stuff and we're going to use sculpt and olive uh, <coughs> which is a really nice darker reddish olivish color uh, on the top. I take a clump and I pull it a 
apart a couple of times just to sort of align the, the fibers. And I tie it in in the center of the clump and I try to spread it on both sides of the hook. So it's covering more or less half the hook. And then we turn the hook around and then you take some of this uh, rusty bronze here. Maybe a little bit smaller clump than the sculpin olive one. Same thing, pull it apart a couple of times, align the fibers and tie it in. Loose turns and pull harder. Okay, uh, make sure you cover up all the way around. Then you d divide the two clumps again and you go forward with your thread in between and fold everything backwards like that. I don't want to tie it down, definitely not. Uh, because we're going to build a sort of a bulky head on this this baby. Take another big clump of rusty or or the sculpin olive. Ah, that was a bit too generous, maybe. Same thing here. One more time. can be sort of tricky with the with the bend of the hook here but usually get it quite well and it's not so necessary to to get them really tight together because uh, when you're folding everything backwards it sort of blends together nicely anyway ah, I think that's that clump is sort of enough Loose turns and try not to drag the sculpin olive around. There we go, couple of turns on exactly the same place and then fold it and pull it backwards. Okay. I think that's about it. It's a big, messy head. Perfect. Uh, just to finish it off, make it a nice ending, I take some dark grey felt pen here and color the thread up a little bit. Cool. Super glue. Super glue. Couple of turns. Uh, then you can do like half hitch, doesn't matter. Ah, come on, get in there. Pull it hard and trim the thread off. Okay, we're done with the tying part. Uh, now we're just gonna do the final touch up. Brush this bastard vigorously. I tend to brush a little bit more on the underside just to get some more of the um, rusty bronze color out of there. And take away the hair clip as well. Nice. Looking good. Okay. Uh, a sort of a bait fish, bait fish pattern wouldn't be anything uh, without some proper eyes. I'm going to use these uh, uh, 9mm uh, fluorescent green with a white pupil. It's like a zombie eye. 
the evil zombie eye of the bait fish. I don't know. Okay. And I use, uh, for this I use this Ladex, Ladex glue called Tearmender, uh, which is really good. Uh, get the eyes to stick there for a long time. But make sure you shake it thoroughly before you use it. And it's sort of runny, so I usually put a drip on, on something uh, so I can dispose as much as I want on the eye. I just hold it with my fingers. Then I just put a big big drop of of this latex glue on here. Try to find where I want it and stick it there. Okay, next side. It takes a little while for this stuff to dry, so it's not much of a hurry. Okay, let's see if we can get it in place. I place it centered over the over the hook shank on each side of the head. And to, to get it to sort of get the right profile on the head, I take one of these hair clips and place it over the eye so it really tightens them up to make it a, from the front a very flat head. And now it's going to take a while for this stuff to dry, so uh, go get a beer or a coke or whatever. So everything should be dry now. Just to finish it off, you can, you can. Uh, I take a, this dark gray pen and I stroke it a few times over this rusty bronze dubbing, just to make it a little bit darker in the absolute front here. Then I paint a little bit on the on the rust on the scalp and olive as well. Yeah, something like that. Last thing to check is that the length of the sunker is okay here. It may be a little bit too long. So I trim it just a little bit. It's okay if it overlaps us a, a bit. And then I usually taper it down a little bit in the back. Cut like a pointy tip. You get a nice taper on the on the hair here in the back. So that's it. It's a crazy crazy fly in the water. Um, has some really erratic motions when it swims. Sort of goes like this up and up and down. Uh, but because of these beads on the on the wire, it never, or more or less never, flips over and twists your leader. Quite a fun fly to tie and, and uh, even more fun to fish with. Give it a go. Thanks for watching.